Hey, ER, seen any good movies lately? <gasps> yeah. Nope is the third film in the JPCU, and the final piece of evidence I need to prove Proof. that Peel is actually M. Night Shyamalan. What a twist! Stay with me here. Each made a name for themselves from a smaller scale scary movie with a big twist, proceeded to make another twisty movie both with titles starting with you, and then their third big film? They're both about a family in the middle of nowhere dealing with space aliens. Oh. What more proof y'all need? M. Night transplanted his brain into Jordan Peele's body and is retracing the steps that made him famous. Genius! Well, except the sixth sense is ten times the movie Get Out was. Nope is one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. I love Jordan Peele and Kiki Palmer can act her ass off, but this movie is objectively slow and confusing with stretched themes that don't justify the pace. Wow. Oh, sorry, I was just reading the opinion of internet superstar Logan Paul, who got ratioed over the coals for it, because posting a contrarian opinion on Twitter is about as smart as faking a dead body on YouTube. Logan had some very pertinent questions. Who? But my thesis is this. I can feel him trying to recreate the shock from Get Out and Us. Yeah, I wonder why. Mystery, violent allure, and cinematic choices made for the sake of reaction instead of a legitimate contribution to the storyline killed this movie for me. Bro, you sure you're not talking about Get Out? I think Peel struck a way better balance with Nope. That's right, Nope is Peel's best movie yet. What a shocking turn of events. It's, uh, got its issues though. That's okay, we're not judging. Massive spoilers ahead. Nope begins with a monkey having gone bananas on the set of a sitcom. <laughs> This immediately sets up the theme and subject matter of the movie, that this Hollywood phenomenon of crafted contained spectacle has gotten a little out of hand, to the point of being exploitative of animals and even children, and our addiction to it is poisoning the well. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, y'all, I'm sorry. Then the movie actually begins, just after Get Out, and Chris now works on a ranch. We can see he learned his lesson about white women, so he's moved on to white women's best friend instead. <laughs> he's working for his dad, who's dabbling in the horse showbiz, but only briefly because the dude gets railgunned by a quarter through the face. Also, someone plays Pin the Key on the Horse, who takes it like a total champ. No reaction at all. Both events are just hand waved away as a freak accident, and uh, that's lame. This is a signature move of Peel in all three of his movies so far. He overplays his hand at the start by showing the true nature of his story instead of just hinting at it or using clever misdirection, and then he just brushes it off. If I were writing this, I'd instead have the horse get spooked, just like all the other horses violently react to the mysterious presence in the sky, and the horse would end up throwing the dad off and trampling him to death. Softly echoing the opening scene with the monkey. This manner of death would be much more explainable to police and such, but also be just as confusing to Chris, who know damn well the horse was spooked by something, but what? It'd also play a bit into the theme and why Chris sells the horses afterward. The spectacular scene of his father's death by a horse would have poisoned horses for him, but at the same time they're all he has left of his father too, so he kinda wants them back, leading to some internal strife. There, it's not the spectacle of a quarter to the eye slot, but I think this works okay, keeps things a little more grounded. Logan questioned the logistics of this scene, but what he should have asked is where the fuck was all the blood? As we're shown later, not only does the thing in the sky spit up its victim's items, but also all of their blood. Where's the blood peel? Oh, but you wouldn't have been able to hand wave that away as a freak accident, so conveniently, it doesn't happen. Shocker. Anyway, rip dad. Then we get to the title credit sequence, and here we see peel is evolving. We've gone from the usual three minutes to down to a minute and a half. Progress. Six months later, Chris takes one of his remaining horses to the set of a commercial for a job. Because this is a Peel movie, everyone on set is white, which means they're all comically thoughtless caricatures. To be fair though, it's Hollywood, where I assume that's actually the case. Cool it with the anti gemetic remarks. Chris is justifiably a little fearful in front of white folks, so enter stage right, his boisterous sister Emerald, to do all the talking. Did you know that the very first assembly of photographs in sequential order to create a motion picture was a two second clip of a black man on a horse? Actually, no, I didn't know that. Yes, was. Yes, it was. Look it up. Okay, I will. And turns out it was most likely a white guy. Out the gate running, Peel. This assembly of photos Peel uses is from years later, and even then, there's no information on the jockey used. As the photos are all of silhouettes, it's hard to say any were black men. Call that a little black lie. Chris and M are the descendants of this alleged black jockey, keeping their presence in showbiz alive. But they end up losing the job because this horse doesn't like stuff near his ass. <laughs> And so for the crime of being homophobic, Chris sells him to a cowboy theme park owner named Ricky, who was a child actor who survived the chimp out at the start. That night, Chris catches the sight of a UFO in the sky, and M, enterprising woman that she is, wants to try catching it on film for Oprah or some shit. Black niggers, where is she? Stand up and say that if you don't mind. So they get a guy at the electronics store named Angel to help them set up cameras. The dialogue from Angel ain't the best. Ancient aliens. 
history channel watch that shit but the stuff between the siblings is good and here i was actually kind of digging the movie yeah i know in contrast to get out and us where the protagonists passively bumbled around and bad shit happened to them nope's protagonists have an actual motive and a goal and they act on them naturally these are the types of stories i much prefer with the cameras the trio pin down a stationary cloud in the sky and deduce it's the ufo's hiding spot chris even infers it probably ain't a ship but a living creature damn that knock to his head somehow had the handsome squidward effect but for his iq then we get another flashback to the monkey sitcom and i'm fairly certain peel didn't mean for me to laugh at most of it but the internet has ruined chimps for me look at that big ass look at that big juicy booty really tying in with that theme eh aside from that this scene is easily one of the weakest in the film at least in my opinion i understand what it's doing fortifying the spectacle gone wrong shtick and setting up our twist antagonist ricky whose trauma will shape his egotistical actions later but in a movie over two hours long that certainly didn't need to be this would have been the first scene i scrapped that little bit of monkey we get at the start was basically enough less is more sometimes especially with the less than stellar cg hey kid i have information that'll lead to hillary clinton's hey don't what was up with the shoe yeah randomly in the middle of the scene we cut to a shot of a shoe defying gravity why how who cares you can interpret it however you want i just don't give a pea-sized shit there's a difference between interweaving symbolism throughout a narrative with care and consideration and lazily stuffing some weird crap into the middle of a scene the placement is the worst culprit here you have this decently tense scene of a kid watching in terror as an animal mauls his colleagues to death and then our focus is ripped away to bewilder us with abstract shoo-in put that shit at the end would you better yet toss the shoe for real all right so then we get to the big twist ricky's been feeding chris's horses to the sky creature all this time and now he's going to do it for a paying crowd what and best yet the twist mostly works primarily because it's the first time peel doesn't give it all away in the first five minutes of the movie for once and this is also the first time he doesn't have the antagonist blatantly exposit the movie's story and theme to the audience and he easily could have ever since i survived the monkey attack i knew i was special i knew i alone had the power to tame nature so it is only i today who can show you my control and exploitation of the sky creature Woo! <coughs> I'm sure that took some real restraint, Peel. So well done on respecting your audience's intelligence, even if you've been kind of right to assume they're a little retarded. Of course, I'm not 100% satisfied with this twist because like, how the fuck ain't Chris noticing his horses disappearing from this dude? Chris even wants his horses back, but doesn't once insist to see them for half a year. <laughs> then there's the fact that Ricky clearly doesn't know the don't look at the creature rule, even though he's successfully been dealing with it for several months. Mm-hmm. Also, Ricky invites Chris and M to the feeding of their fucking horse. I wanted to invite you to a new family live show. Mm, what? Still, the foundation for this reveal is laid out far better than it ever was in Us or even Get Out. And my opinion may turn out to be a minority one, but we're all non-racist here, right? The movie soon switches from horror to a thriller action set piece, and I approve. It's kind of cool, honestly, with the main characters cunningly setting up a trap for a horror movie monster they can't look at or get near with technology. They populate the ranch with wacky inflatable arm flailing tube men to signal where the angel's AT field is. And they also get a cinematographer with a hand crank camera to video it and of course everything goes wrong but in inventive ways and ultimately the siblings do get their money shot with shit that peel set up at the park earlier in the movie i liked it in fact i'm kind of proud of peel so he's not just a one-trick pony hiding behind america's most religious subject matter as social commentary they're they're being seen for their color first mm. before being connected as an individual it's um even though it's not a hateful thing, it's still a shade and a side of this this big sort of mess that we call racism. Right, my experience with anti-black racism is really specific. Other people of color experience other forms of racism too, but you won't see any of that if you don't see color. Well, shit, do I see people as individuals or do I do as Steven Universe says and see color? So many mixed race signals here. I mean, as a POS myself, I like the message behind Get Out and all, that white liberals are all demon spawn and we should burn them. But the story was just such a laughably thin veil for it, it just wasn't worth my time. If I want to see the libs get owned, I can just hop on Twitter. Trigger the libs, own the libs. But hey, it was also Peel's first attempt, so maybe third time has actually been the charm. In my opinion, Nope has dramatically more thought put into its narrative, and the message ain't so overpowering. It's still riddled with issues for me, but my expectations were so underground 
Brown after Us, I'm happy to have them subverted. Plus, the acting was good, the monster was cool, Michael Abels is back with a sweet music score, and the third act was genuinely pretty fun. So credit where credit is due. Also, the movie can scrap at least 20 minutes worth of scenes, has too much eye-rolling dialogue, especially from Angel and the cinematographer character, and all that emphasis on the horses' names is kind of ironic, since those probably aren't their real names. So, Peel, ain't you doing exactly what your message denounces? Exploiting animals for the use of your movie? Hmm. But all in all, nope doesn't get a nope from me. Maybe the real twist was the friends we made along the way. Now we just wait for Peel to remake M. Night's The Last Race Bender. But this time, Aang will be black. I am Melon Lord! And the Fire Nation, of course, will be all white people. Yes, all white people. Oh, no. Yes, all white people. No. I don't want to hear it like, yes, all white people. No. Period. Yes, all white people. All no, white no, people. No, all no, of no, you. No, all no. of you. Yes, all white people. No. Yes, all white people. All white people. No. Yes, all motherfucking white people. No, 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 no. All of you. I do something.